Here's a look at something I made nine years ago. You can see I even inscribed my name in June 2004 on the bottom of it here. And it's, I was really proud of myself at the time. I put a lot of work and thought into it. Got a nice aluminum plate on the bottom, a nice wooden box, a nice cardboard cover with all the seams neatly glued and even along here where I scored the cardboard I still put glue on there to hold everything together and put a, a table inside for all the different voltage scales that I have on this AC voltmeter and the reason I say it's a fail is because you can see right here 400 Hertz I don't think I recognize the significance of that at the time uh, this was right after I graduated um, college uh, with my undergraduate degree but um, basically it it still worked I still managed to make it work to make it measure voltage very well at 30 volt I mean at 60 Hertz and I had 6 15 30 60 150 and 300 volt ranges and um, that was the reason for the the bottom aluminum plate because I remember that I had to put some some uh, some of the resistors, some of the series resistors um, on the plate because they were getting too hot so the plate is actually a heat sink. And the reason those resistors get hot is because it actually draws at 60 Hertz it draws 36 milliamps when it's in full when it's on the needle pointing at full scale. And um, you can see the resistance over here 8300 ohms for the maximum 300 volt scale and lowest scale, 6 volt scale, only 170 ohms. So really, really poor as a voltmeter. Um, but it, uh, it was, I obviously intended to only use it for low impedance um, AC circuits where the components have at least one amp flowing through them so that the 36 milliamps this thing draws would not um, cause too much of a, too much measurement error. But anyway, in, in nine years, I've never taken it apart, and I totally forget what it looks like on the inside. So let me unscrew it here. Okay, here we go. Wow, look at that. That's something. The meter itself, apparently, at... 60 Hertz is 4.2 volts and 36 milliamps full scale. Just got a cheap Radio Shack rotary switch down there. They even have, look at that! I put a spare fuse and a little fuse holder right there and I even label fuse 0.1 amp. That's awesome. Where does the fuse go? I guess, the, oh, the ver there it is. The fuse goes right there. I got a whole bunch of pots. These pots I actually got from the same um, entertainment system amplifier that I got those other um, 100 or 10,000 microfarad caps that I put into my variable power supply. But there's some other resistors. Got some diodes right there. I actually dug up the schematic for it. I'll show that in a minute, but there's there's the diodes, a bunch of some 1N91 or what is yeah, one fourteen forty eight. I think that should be one N one four four one four eight. I must have missed messed up the numbers there. But um, then there's one N5220, 7.5 volt zeners, and they just protect the, the voltmeter from any kind of over voltage. So this resistor actually has a little heat sink aluminum, piece of aluminum wrapped around it, corrugated aluminum. And I even put some aluminum foil there. Apparently I didn't have any heat sink compound at the time. And you can see this. This one has aluminum foil wrapped around, and these two guys, they've got more aluminum foil wrapped around, and of course they're bolted to the aluminum plate. All the wires are zip-tied together. Man, 
I'm impressed. Very good construction, just not very good utility. Here's another look at that schematic. Put it on an angle so it's better, better to read. The pencil marking is very faint. So there's the meter. Got a 100 ohm resistor and there's a fuse and then all the different resistor combinations to get whatever specific value I needed for the um, for the whatever scale I was going for and then I think these these resistors these are mounted on the heat sink so I'm going to hook it up and see how good of a power supply this thing really is after I mean how good of a voltmeter see if it still works after all this time okay I got it hooked up to my homemade power supply and there it is there's the, uh, the different scales here just for reference I have it on the 6 volt scale right now and comparing it to my other DMM over here and uh, and by the way the reason for the non-linearity of the scale on the voltmeter right here that's because this is not your standard um, DC to arsenal galvanometer with the moving coil going around a permanent DC magnet. It actually has a, uh, a moving iron vein inside there that gets repelled by another piece of iron. And it takes a certain amount of current going through the coil in order to magnetize the, uh, the two pieces of iron to make them repel apart. So that's why, that's why for, there's a jump from 0 to 5 amps or zero to five or what I mean is there's a very little jump here to the first digit on the scale and that's just because you need something going need a, a relatively good amount of current going through the coil in order to get this thing moving anyway let me crank it up here and look at that that's pretty darn good oh man six volts perfectly but unfortunately, you can also see on the ammeter right there, we're looking at hmm, right about right there at about 36 milliamps or so. So that's it's right on the money. Let me look at a different scale. Do 15 volt and turn it up. perfectly 30 volts I gotta go to uh, the high voltage mode on my power supply that looks good 60 spot on And that's the highest I can go with this thing. We're looking at 143 volts right there. And this over here on the 150 scale, we're looking at 125 plus 20. So 145, maybe a little bit less. I mean, the, the needle is not exactly on the, on the black line there. So that's, that's perfect. Let's see how hot this is. Oh, it's not really hot at all. But of course, I wasn't using the 300 volt scale. Maybe I should see if I can get 300 volts on there. So here is my drawer of large transformers. And you can see I got a nice collection. There's this one right here. beast 300 volts at 30 milliamp DC on this particular coil and there's another coil here I can get over about oh, 2,000 yeah from here to here 2,400 volts at 15 milliamps 
really nice transformer and I got another one right down here too but the contacts are dirty I don't feel like cleaning them because of the if I don't clean them I might get some arcing on the on the 2400 volt um, output terminals so I found this one already and it seems I I think I got this out of a vacuum tube reel-to-reel -reel tape player and I included a portion of the schematic that I probably found online and then so then you can see there's 300 volts over 300 volts on the secondary coil so I'm going to give this one a shot first all right here it is let's crank it up Let me go back down to 15, should be 150, yeah, on the DMM, looks good. And all the way up to 30. Awesome, look at that. I put it on 30, just about there, and we get almost up to 300 volt on the DMM, so very, very good. But of course, the only bad thing is that the um, impedance is so low, it draws far too much current for any respectable voltmeter. I've had it going at 300 volts for about 10 minutes now, and, and the back panel, I mean the back plate is it's getting kind of warm. It's not so hot I can't touch it, but it's definitely noticeable. Um, the, the three resistors on the back with 36 milliamps going through them will dissipate 7.6 watts I calculated so certainly not something that I would want to use for long-term measurements but for just quick hook it up to see what voltage something is sure that'll work there you go that's my AC voltmeter that I made in June of 2004 um, it's really only good for low impedance AC circuits at 60 Hertz too. I mean, if I put it on 400 Hertz, that would be a whole nother ballpark. And I think this, this Weston AC voltmeter, that's, you know, at 400 Hertz, it really would show 30 volts full scale and it would be much higher impedance too. It would act like a voltmeter should act. But in this case, I think, I think at the time I was actually doing some high impede or I was doing some low impedance you know high power AC circuits experiments at the time so that's probably why I built it but um, after that I really haven't used it at all because I moved on to other things so here it stands and still works very well so please give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you next time later